ghostly image that you see here of a circle are actually ionized atoms that are caused by collision of electrons inside the bulb. I will show you these things momentarily. But the diameter of this circle I have separately measured and will be giving to you in a data sheet. Here is the system with daylight restored. You can see that the bulb is powered by a high voltage source and that voltage source is located here. There's 250 volts going through it. Again, that number 250 will be provided in the data sheet I'll give you. That voltage is the voltage between the two plates of the electron beam gun, which I'm trying to focus on right now. You can see that little bit of green in between those two electrodes. Those two plates or other cylinders are maintained at 250 volts potential difference and that's sufficient to accelerate the electrons to a certain velocity. Now why do they curve? They curve because of the magnetic field produced by this object known as the Helmholtz coil. Let's take a close look at the Helmholtz coil. It consists of two coils with a certain number of turns and you can see that there is a certain thickness to these wires. Unfortunately, we don't know the number of turns in these coils. However, it will turn out not to be required. These two Helmholtz coils are separated by a distance. So you can use the magnetic field formula for a circular coil of wire times n turns to find the magnetic field at this location and then double that for both coils. What is known about the coils is the voltage of the power source. When I took the measurements, the voltage was something else. So that's the volt number that you read there is the voltage. Don't take any of these measurements down. I'll provide you a separate data sheet. The idea is to use that voltage there and some data about the wire gauge of the wire. The wire gauge of the wire is really measured very simply. I took the distance between this and that, those two spool, uh, spool disks. I took the distance between, inner distance between them and I found that, counted the total number of wires and from that I got the diameter of the wire. Now you will take that and look at the American wire gauge chart to find the resistance per unit length. So the purpose of this experiment is to put everything together. There are four or five formulas that you have to put together in a theory section and at the end of the day you will get the value of the permittivity mu naught of vacuum and hence the speed of light.